hosts and anchors were sitting here judging you on all of that. Barry, yeah, not I'm your sorry. time to talk yet. No. Okay. Right, she's the host. <laughs> I'm not host. your time yet. One host today. That's One right. host today. Also, Bart Scott here. <laughs> Hanging out. Four far harm. <laughs> Right. I love it. You guys excited? Ready? Let's go. Ready to go? Yeah. All right. We start things off not too far from where we are right now. The New York Jets have been in a standoff with Hassan Reddick. And yesterday, the Pro Bowler officially requested a trade. Reddick, unhappy with his contract, has missed 21 days of training camp, racking up a $50,000 fine per day. The holdout has cost him $1.7 million total so far. The Jets immediately released a statement in Response, Jets GM Joe Douglas saying, we have informed Hassan that we will not trade him, that he is expected to be here with his teammates and that he will continue to be fined per the CBA if he does not report. Since the trade discussions back in March, we have been clear, direct, and consistent with our position. Our focus will remain on the guys we have here as we prepare for the regular season. Matt Berry, yes. I'm going to start with you. Can the Jets win the AFC East without Reddick? So here's what I love about what just happened on this network. Uh -huh. In the history of this network, we have never led a Jets conversation with Hassan Reddick. Fair. <laughs> Ever. It's always Aaron Rodgers at minicamp, Aaron Rodgers hanging out in Egypt, Aaron Rodgers in, in dark spaces, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. This is the first time we've talked about Hassan Reddick without anything to do with what the Jets are going to do this season. The answer to the question is yes, the Jets can win the AFC East because, again, it's an Aaron Rodgers team. Yep. Last year, this defense, third in total defense, eighth in sacks, they were a quarterback away from winning the division last year. So if you look at where Hassan Reddick is, I get it, prime of his career, 29 years old, 15 and a half sacks the last four seasons. All the bona fides are there, but the Jets' success, as we have detailed on this network day in and day out, it's an Aaron Rodgers team in an offensive league. So I don't think Hassan Reddick, it's a deal, yes. Is it a division killer? Absolutely not. So I guess then my answer would be like, you just answered what I was going to say and the fact that they can absolutely not win their division without Hassan Reddick because the only sure bet of this entire Jets team is their defense. This is what we hang our hat on in terms of if you are a Jets fan or someone that follows the Jets closely is the fact that their defense was ranked so highly the past few years. They do have all of these players that are coming back in hopes to win a championship, but what we haven't proven yet, is your quarterback going to be okay? Can this offense be run? You brought in Nathaniel Hackett to run the offense for essentially Aaron Rodgers. You have no idea if this is going to work. You don't, Quite frankly, you aren't even sure your head coach is a good fit there yet. You have not seen the results of that, and so therefore, if you're going to hang your hat on a defense that doesn't have a pass rusher on the edge that you absolutely need is in terms of a veteran presence, how could you be sure that they're going to go out and win the division when your only sure bet now is up in the air? If you look at pass rushers or players that had 10 or more sacks over the last four seasons, there's two people on the list, Miles mm -hmm. Garrett and Hassan Reddick. That's the list. He has shown that he himself can take the defense to another level. And not to mention, you let your best pass rusher basically walk to the Eagles with for nothing because you thought you were getting Hassan Reddick. And so how could you think that you're going to go out and win the division without someone that's going to anchor your defense and do what is your bread and butter and what Robert Sala essentially wants to do, which is after, get after the opposing quarterback? Well, when you, when you look at the Jets and you look at what they went through last year and how they finished so high, you talk about how they were third in defense. You talk about eighth in sacks. Well, this was a team that played, you know, either behind all the time where teams were able to run the ball and they weren't one-dimensional. You talk about one, one of the, the, the problems that Rex had is that we continue to, to draft defensive players. And the problem was is how you fix the defense is by improving your offense. With, with what the personnel has with the addition of Mike Williams to go along with Gary Wilson, you talk about, you know, Braylon Allen and what he looked like being that bruiser and that in-between the tackles guy, the guy to get Brees type of a break. You talk about this defense going to be playing from the lead. So they're going to have the opportunity for guys like Will McDonald, who's a kind of a one-trick pony right now. How do you know they're going to be playing with the lead? Because they have Aaron Rodgers. If they just, if, but you don't even know what Aaron Rodgers is. He's a 40-plus-year-old quarterback who's listen, coming off listen, an Achilles injury listen, for the first time in his career. Listen, they basically had a cone playing quarterback last year, and they were able to win seven games and still beat the Buffalo Bills, the team that you predict is going to win the division. You know, last year, the Jets always played the Buffalo Bills well, and that's with, you know, being handy handicap because they don't have a great quarterback. You put a guy like Aaron Rodgers there. If the Jets would have averaged 21 points a game, which is the bare minimum, they were last in every metric when you think about, you know, um, you know, offense. You know offense last year. <laughs> if they can just be middle of the pack, this defense, because on the outside they have two lockdown corners. I think they have the best nickel in all of football of Michael Carter II. 
they're going to allow a guy like Will McDonald, who's a tremendous pass rusher, but what he isn't is a every down type of defensive end right now. You talk about Jermaine Johnson, what he's been able to do. Hopefully he can take the next step. Last year, eight sacks was one of the most complete, you know, and, and, and very bright spots for that defense. They're going to be able to generate pressure simply because they can, you know, lock down on the outside. And listen, Hassan Red is going to have to show up at some point because if he doesn't show up, they're going to still own his rights to next year. He's 29 years old. He's going to be 30. I think they figure a way to get it figured out. I understand his argument, but I also understand the Jets and Joe Douglas standing on business saying, hey, until you come here, we're not going to discuss your contract. So, Jay, go ahead. Jay, kids, when, you, when you look at the Jets' big picture, we gave you the statistics defensively. They were brilliant last year. Yeah. They were in contention – for most of the year for a wild card spot with the remedial offense. Right. Okay, you add Aaron Rodgers in an offense that was 31st in the league last year. What do we talk about in the AFC East? It's quite simple. Josh Allen, Tua Tungabailoa. Yep. What were we talking about last year with the Jets? Zach Wilson? And so Trevor Simeon. Right. And so you, you Go take on down the, team, the list. Keep Quinn going with the they, They've got defensive stars. Do you want a guy that averages 12 and a half, 13? Yeah, that's not the argument. The argument is the one piece you didn't have in place last year with a young receiver who I believe in Garrett Wilson's going to be one of the top five, ten receivers in the league with a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. The one thing they didn't have last year when they were still competitive was the Hall of Fame quarterback. You and add so him in. You add him into a mix of the defense that was already good. I get Huff's gone. He's out. I get it. Young pass rushes for the Jets. I get it. They're going to have to step up if Son Reddick's not there. But for me, for the Jets, as it's always been, they made the move to compete with one player, and it was number eight, and he hasn't been there. Okay, so you brought it all the way back around to Aaron Rodgers, the thing that you started out saying that That's you right. didn't want to start with. And then you just said it. You have young pass rushers on the corner. I feel like if you're unhappy with your contract situation, you hold out or hold in. It doesn't matter, okay? Mm -hmm. Case in point, CeeDee Lamb. We, he hasn't asked for a trade. He just simply isn't participating or being around his team because he's not happy with his contract. Mm -hmm. Why is Hassan Reddick going to the point of not just not showing up to camp or continuing to hold out, but saying, I want to trade? It's that means you no longer the, want to be with the organization. No, it's the only play he has left. He has no cards because the leverage is all on the Jets because they own his rights. And if he holds out, do, do, does a Le'Veon Bell, he still is going to be on the roster the following year. He's not. He's going to miss on an accredited year. You know, when the season starts, that, that fine goes to 700. That's a game check. That's $700,000. Now, that's a lot to stomach. I think if he gets there, they find a way to push some money into his contract this year. And I understand his gripe. His gripe is, like you said, um, he's had more sacks, you know, 40 or 50 sacks in four years. Mm -hmm. yeah, Ten or more in the last right, four right. years. It's only yeah. one player that you yeah. can say that to. In this town, in this market, Brian Burns, you know, came out with a five-year, $150 million thing. I, he, that's double what Hassan is going to make this year. But Hassan really has no leg to stand on. So asking for a trade is the only thing, only only play that he has left. And that's what he's trying to do. But, he's trying to force the, you know, the Jets to pay him by embarrassing okay. the organization. Can I just ask a question? You may. We're, we're all in agreement that the Jets' defense is what – is the answer this year, okay? They have this in place, and they're bringing in the championship caliber quarterback closer, that's going to change. Von Miller. Okay, speaking of closers, on the defensive side of the ball, could you not say Hassan Reddick is equal to what you would call a closer? He is the only pass rusher in the NFL to have 18 and a half sacks in the fourth that. quarter. Yeah. Like, he is what gives your defense insurance when it, things are going to be tight and it's down, it's down to the wire. Not having him there as an anchor matters, can especially ask, for the psyche of someone like Aaron Rodgers. Yes. What do we talk about with the Kansas City Chiefs? Patrick Mahomes. Their offense. And the off offense. scripts. And yes. the offense. This is an offensive league where the rules are structured yep. to where the offenses succeed and the defenses keep you in games. In this division, and I brought it up, Patriots don't count this year. Patriots are rebuilding. Mm -hmm. But the other two teams with Tua and Josh Allen, all you need to do, you gave me the stat, I think it was 21 points a game. Yep. All you need to do is stay in <laughs> shootouts. Right. That's it. You're not staying in shootouts with Hassan Reddick. You're staying in shootouts with Aaron Rodgers and your talent. How not so? Well, Hassan Reddick could but, but, slow down but, but, the other but, but, team. But with this defense, the Jets aren't going to give up those type of yardage, right? They, they're not going to give up, you know, 24 points a game. Like Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to be, you know, give this defense opportunity to have a rest. They, they, listen, last year they closed with, with Quincy Williams, you know, coming off coming off the edge and blitzing, right? So they, they, there's more ways to skin a cat, more than one way to skin a cat. I think they have an opportunity this year. This is the best roster I feel Aaron Rodgers has since he won a Super Bowl, top to bottom, even I'd with agree. or without his side ready. What they've done on the offensive side of the ball – with the offensive line, with two running backs, and maybe three when you think about Isaiah Davis and what he showed 
Mike Williams, Alan Lazard looks like he can play They're again. They're loaded. Right, they're loaded. This is arguably one of the best rosters in football with or without Hassan Reddick. And I'm not saying this because Greeny's next door. Like, I, I know he's out there yeah. listening to that. Greeny is slightly <laughs> disgruntled by Hassan yeah. Riddick, which yeah. makes my point even further. I'm just saying your sure bet has been your defense. And if it's no longer a sure bet, all of the arguments but, but, go but out. You're, act, you're acting like they, they lost they the lost unit everything. that came. They lost one dude. You're, you're, you've lost, yeah, essentially. Best, we don't know. Well, apparently, he's going to be there no matter what. Well, but they have the best secondary. They still have sure, Quinn and Williams. But you don't they have an elite pass rusher. Sure, Jermaine Johnson is an elite pass rusher. He's rest. young. He's going into his third year. He's which, still so which, young. You know what you upgraded? Michael Parsons in what year? Oh, please. Let's we'll not compare him to Micah Parsons. Was that Nick a, Bosa. <laughs> was that a segue <laughs> to the Cowboys? Yeah. It, 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 it was a great job, everybody. Uh, 